Uh, I do want to get uh, your take on gold next, though, Matt, mm-hmm. because uh, this one, in my opinion, is one of the things that grabbed my attention the most here this morning. We've been talking about the potential test of support. It tested at last uh, early in the month, I should say, in early uh, early March, and now we're back down here. Uh, a lot of this is on strength of the dollar, at least on a one-day uh, deal where the dollar's gone mm-hmm. up on strong economic data. Gold is now back down near 1680. How? What are you seeing here? Because I know uh, this is something well, you've been watching for. The, the long term, and we were talking about this a little bit in the pre-production show, but the long term analysis is, is fairly complicated right now when, when you're looking at the dollar. And obviously, when you're looking at the dollar, it's going to have an impact directly on gold. Um, it, that, that impact, I don't believe, is in is to the same degree as in other commodities, but definitely it has a massive, massive impact on, on gold. And when you're, when you're looking at the dollar, and we'll take a look at UUP very quickly here before we come to, uh, to gold. When you're looking at the dollar, obviously the dollar is showing some fairly significant strength in, in the last four or five weeks here. And there's a lot of, lot of individuals out there wondering why. Why on the backdrop of all this stimulus and this pool of money and the debt that we have went into, which is far more than anybody else around the world. Why is it the dollar is performing better than its counterpart currencies in this environment? Because it wasn't like Europe just passed a $1.9 trillion stimulus plan. It wasn't like uh, China just passed a $1.9 trillion stimulus plan. It wasn't like Japan just passed a 1.9 trillion. Um, I'm not sure Australia and New Zealand did either. So we're, we're the only country that just really kind of did that. We're pumping in $120 billion a month into the market, literally every single month in QE. We've increased our balance sheet by, by 120% in the last year. Like no other country has done this. And so why is the dollar going up? Well, a lot of that backdrop is here, number one, that a lot of that backdrop is here, but what is happening here in the short term, this, this price movement right here, what you're seeing is the visual identification of everything Jay Powell is talking about from an economic perspective. The US economy is going to outperform the rest of the world over the next year. And I don't think this should be surprising to anybody. The U.S. economy is front is in front of the rest of the world. They've vaccinated more total people than anybody else. It's not even close in terms of total numbers. Now, other the smaller countries have vaccinated a higher percentage of their populace than we have, but nothing remotely close to what the U.S. has done. Mm-hmm. When you look at the U.S. economic production right now and, in, and, and based on where we expect it to be, based on the Fed projections in the SRP last week, uh, uh, two weeks ago, the U.S. economy is expected to be robust in the next year. I can't say that about other economies. And so what you're having competing in the, in the currency market right now is, and I've said this many, many, many times, you have a race to the bottom in the currency market. Everybody's trying to compete with everybody else. Zero interest rate policy, debt-driven policies, free money policies. You have this race to the bottom. And yes, we started it. Mm-hmm. The U.S. started this. We started this in 08, the race to the bottom, the latest edition of the currency war. And in that race to the bottom, you're going to have the net value of all currencies contract over time from a buying, uh, buying power perspective. Okay, What you have in the currency market, though, because everything is freely floated against one another, is despite the net value all going down, some currencies have to go up in value, some currencies have to go down in value. And a lot of that is based on what happens economically. And so what's happening economically right now and over the course of the last month, and what a lot of people expect over the course of the next nine months is the US economy to start inching up and up and up against its other counterparts. And the value of the currency goes at a direct value to their economic standing. And so if the US economy improves, well, look at the dollar, the dollar's gonna improve. And that's what you're seeing in the chart here. And so even though you have the backdrop of all this pool of money, and even though you have the backdrop of the continuation of the pool of money, you have this massive macro U.S. economy was expected to be 4.2%. That was right here. 
U.S. economy is now expected to be 6.5%. That is right here. The U.S. economy is improving. It's improving against its counterparts. That is, what you're, that is why you're seeing the dollar appreciate in the backdrop of what is happening from a fundamental perspective with, uh, with monetary policy. Now, is this going to continue? Most likely. Most likely it will. And most likely, not always the case, but most likely that will have a negative impact on gold because gold is priced in what currency around the world? Everyone, dollars, 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 right? So it has a direct impact on the value of gold. And so as the dollar is showing its strength, gold has been showing a little bit of weakness, obviously. Now, we talked yesterday, and yes, I do see that continuing. I, I see the dollar continuing to show strength against its other currencies. Now, we talked yesterday about my personal expectation that 1680 was going to be tested again. We're getting that test here. You're getting that test. You had, you had a couple things happen here today, but one, you had the consumer confidence report came out earlier today. And Mark, that consumer confidence report number was, was fairly positive. Fairly Bigger positive. number since the pandemic started. Yeah. Yeah. But what, what you really had was on the overnight action in Europe. You had on the overnight action in Europe, you had a violation of support. That came down to where it found a stabilization of support. Shockingly, where did it find that, Tim? 1680. Right there. Right there, 1680. It's almost like technical analysis works a little mm -hmm. bit, guys. So it comes down and it tests that very important 1680 level right when the U.S. cash open happens. Okay. Now, the economic data came out right here. You saw the initial drive down, as it should, based on everything I've said. Mm -hmm. But what happens? Support holds. The initial reaction drives down, as is, as is typical, with that type of positive re response. What happens, though, later? It stabilizes. And where does it stabilize? 1680, right north of 1680. So we got the test we expected, based on the analysis we anticipated. Now the battle begins for gold. Now we have that fight. And I never fight battles for support, ever. Never, never, never. You don't want to fight for support. You want to see the victory. You want to see a clear victor, the, 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 the just utter annihilation of the opposing side. You want to see those bulls come in. Stabilization on the interday support when you're analyzing a long-term support level is just data point one. It, it's somebody fired the first shot. That's all, that's all that happened. <laughs> somebody fired a bow that they weren't even supposed to shoot. Yeah, I've been watching Vikings again. They, they weren't even supposed to shoot the bow, but the bow got shot. This is the starting of the battle. Let it play out. Let's see support hold. Let's see support hold multiple times but you're in the zone. You're in the zone there on gold. And I'm excited about that battle. I'm just not gonna fight it. Now on GDX, GDX obviously is gonna get hit when gold gets hit, again, mm -hmm. anticipate it. But what did we say yesterday, Mark? Literally all, all the, I spent like 20 minutes and a half time, nine and a half time reporting the podcast talking about what number yesterday? 32. 32 bucks. 32. Gap down, what holds? 32. Let's see gold now perform at 1680. And let's see if GDX forms that higher level of support with gold forming. You're seeing the beginnings of a good analysis, but it's just the beginnings. Give us a couple more days. We'll see what happens with gold, but I'm getting excited about it. 